the camera I'm looking at now is the Ricoh 500. Ricoh with Olympus and Konica were key players in the compact camera market in the 1970s. This was a time when automation was coming in and people wanted something light and easy to use. We weren't quite at the range of automatic focusing, although that did begin to come in in 1978 and 79. This camera dates from 1977. What do we actually have here? We have a compact camera with some quite interesting high spec spe um, specifications on it. It's nice and easy to open. We open it from the top here and you can see we can load the film manually. We have in order to use it in automatic mode, we pop the A at here on A for automatic and we can put the shutter speed on one to five. What that then means is that we can simply focus and click and the camera will automatically choose the aperture for us. And we can see that aperture in the window. There's a little lever and it goes against the chosen aperture. The battery goes in the bottom. It takes a 1.5. I did have to sort of use a 13 AG, I think, with a little bit of foil to make it really fit. Um, so using it on automatic, really easy to use. If you decide to use it manually and use um, you can do so you can set it to a different shutter speed and set the aperture accordingly. Um, you can use uh, different shutter speeds and keep it on automatic and it will adjust accordingly. But I think the green for the one to five is signified in order to make that the most standard um, setting you would probably use. We have a self timer on the camera. We have a little feature called BC, which is backlight control. So if you're shooting against a window and the person is a little bit dark because the light coming against the window, um, that will open up a stop. The ME, as I might have mentioned earlier, is down at the bottom and that stands for multiple exposure. So by bringing this over here, here you can then take several photographs and stop at the on top of the first frame um, so, so you can build up like ghost images don't know quite how popular that was in the 1970s but it is a feature of this particular camera um, it's very light to use it's a good clear um, viewfinder as i said it's got this double image of the range finder in and it's a delight to use. Oh, and it's got this little container on the back that we can put at the back of a film canister so we can see what type of film we are using. And that is basically it. Let's see how it performed when I took the camera out. So the first photograph, I noticed a little bit of a light leap down on the right hand corner. And this I noticed in at least two frames. And I just wonder if it could be something to do with the light seals. I don't know if I mentioned in the video, but the light seals did look a little bit like they need refreshing. But the slightly odd thing is it's only on these first two photographs, which are taken in the village of Morton in Dorset in the UK. You see, this image here on the right hand side, that light leak is no longer there. It could be that I've um, these are self loaded cassettes I've loaded myself, so I might have got a light leak there. However, let's talk about the camera. It's performing quite nicely. Um, the sharpness is good, it's easy to use. The only thing I did get slightly annoyed about was, and it's my pure fault, was I had put the camera off automatic, but the needle still shows up in the window, so um, and you can't see the automatic, so you don't realize he switched off automatically. However, the exposures were still usable. So Again, on this side we had good detail and in this long view of the path to Lawrence of Arabia's um, TE Lawrence's Clowns Hill, we've got a nice 
vista here and the tones are working well and it's sharp it's everything a compact camera could be of course you've got to rely on the fits focal of the lens it is a 50 mil and for this type of photography it would be nice to have a slightly wider lens this is where i think the olympus um, xa comes into its own however remember this camera was clearly aimed at a sort of um, quality um, but snap snap um, take a photographer in the 1970s it's a general use camera and as a general use camera i think it's excellent it's nice that you've got the variety of shutter speeds it's good that it's a 2.8 lens and it's a lens which performs well in quite dull conditions I did wonder if we had a bit of glare here I couldn't see any fungus in the lens it is possible that there is a little bit of fungus I can't see but it's a nice effect and it does work well against the light into the light the range of tones I think is excellent again I've used, used former pan 100 film that I've developed in ID 11 diluted one to one these are some photographs I took later in the day when the sun was beginning to get a bit lower but I think the sort of golden hour time is ideal for black and white photography where you really want a nice range of shadows this is a camera which I've really enjoyed using and compared to the price of the Olympuses and some other rangefinder compacts it's available if you look carefully online I think at a reasonable price the key thing is the battery from what I understand wasn't completely standard for as I said I got a 13 AG to fit um, and in my experience with um, Ricoh's basically they either work or they don't work but you could argue that's the case with most cameras of this age I enjoyed using it thank you for watching bye for now